It's pretty much keep or trash. Yep. yep. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Hey, complete turnaround in 24 hours, Thanks, dude. Matt. Thank you, complete. man. You're doing great. <clears throat> really good. Wanted to share some thoughts on the Dennis episode with you. Uh, fascinating episode. Dennis and his family were really, really good people. Uh, but Dennis showed the challenge of hoarding. This is it. You can see that I have an abundance of things here that don't belong. To be honest, uh, sometimes our hoarders are so smart that they can't live in the same world that you and I do. I and mean, Dennis was a great example of that. I mean, Dennis is brilliant, like brilliant. Another level, you and I would fill our yard and we think the yard is full because the ground is full. Dennis could go 10, 20, 30 feet high and he would fill it with stuff that had opportunity. Wood, tools, you name it. And he had, he, he had cars back there. He had all these uh, RVs. He had so much stuff because he believed he could use it. And this is what's really hard for people to understand. A hoarder like that, his brain is so much bigger than ours that the possibilities are unlimited. And you and I, as regular folk, we have limits on our brains. We think that we can only do so much. Dennis doesn't have that, that barrier. And so every piece of wood, every car part, every tool, he really believed he could use it. And he was smart enough to actually do it. The only problem with Dennis is he ran out of time. I will never in my lifetime get to do all that my ambitions have drawn me into. I mean, if he had more time in the world and he didn't age, he would absolutely be able to use all these tools. Fascinating guy, brilliant, like brilliant at another level. And it's just an example of how hard these ports can be. This is a massive pile of stone and brick, and I don't have a solution for it right now. The sheer volume, the mathematical stacking that I saw, I've never seen anywhere. We're gonna haul brick for the next two hours in, in any hoard that I've ever done before. Uh, there was some good that came out of this hoard, though. There was tons of RVs in this yard, and we were in a very certain part of the country that had a real challenge with homelessness. And Dennis had the idea, he said, well, I got this guy at church that'll take these RVs and restore them. And so we were really struggling with the environmental laws of how to actually remove some of these RVs. Um, but Dennis, being the smart guy that he is, he had a brilliant idea, he said, hey, let's call this guy. And a guy came, and instead of me having to charge, you know, 500 bucks to remove the thing, the guy actually came and took the RV. And he was able, we were able to donate it. So it was a really unique way that a local hoarder, being as smart as he is, he was able to help us come up with a solution. Um, I think people think when we come to this show that everything, just because we've been doing it for 20 years, that we know everything. A lot of times you just gotta adapt and on the fly figure out how to clean these houses. And my issue was the RVs. There were so many old Winnebago's I didn't know how to get rid of them. And luckily Dennis, being the smart guy that he is, he had a solution for me. Um, it just wasn't up to par. He didn't do it the way he wanted to do. Just looking at Judith and Dennis, I can tell they're happy. And that's what we're here to do. Hi, thanks for being a fan of Hoarders. And subscribe to a &E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.